Welcome to Small Business Celebration. We're continuing our series on small business owners who are getting the move on. And our guest this week, well, she's got the leadership solution to help you grow a strong and profitable business. This is Small Business Celebration. Welcome, where we chat with real business owners who have real success and learn from them about what works, what doesn't, and who want you to know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train. Join us where you can learn something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. Welcome to Small Business Celebration, and our guest this week is Monda Bird, the president of MTS Solutions. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for inviting me. For visioners who don't know who you are, who are you, and what is it that you do? My name is Monda Bird, and I'm president of MTS Solutions. We're an oil field service company in Bakersfield, California. The reason we're talking with Monda is because there's a lot of business owners who got their start not by starting a business, but working their way up through the ranks. And Monda, when you first started with MTS Solutions, what was your role when you first started? I was officially hired as their controller. You were here for their books. Correct. What was the situation like when you first came? When I first came, there was just an opening. The previous controller had passed away, mm. so they had an immediate need. Right. So I came in, I interviewed, and I got, this, got the job. In your role as controller, what did you do here for MTS? Well, basically, I controlled all the finances. And from the finances, you're talking about from accounts payable, accounts receivable, um, everything in between, and get everything ready for the CPAs to close. Right. So that's what I did. And that was my little world when I first started. <laughs> and then? And then I decided I would venture outside my office and found out, you know, what was happening outside the office and found out that in the accounts payable and accounts receivable, there was a lot of redundancies going on that were not efficient. Really? So I started looking at their processes and procedures to find out if there was anything that I could think of outside the box mm -hmm. that would be able to keep them from doing redundant work. And what was one of the things that you, that you noticed? Well, one of the things that we noticed, we have dispatch. We dispatch out our trucks. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we do the dispatching, we would have a, a whiteboard that was where we started. Right. So the whiteboard was where we put all the jobs, right. Monday through Friday, Saturday or Sunday. And as a job changes, which they change every day, you might put them on the board on Monday, but then it, got, it gets canceled and now you have to move it to Wednesday. So then they go to the whiteboard and they erase and they now have to re-put everything on Wednesday. Mm. And so it's just a lot of back and forth work and things like that. So I started thinking there's got to be a better way that we can move things around without having to erase and redo the work. Right. So the first thing I came up with was a magnetic board. So we uh, put the jobs on magnets and then we moved the magnets around. So This was in 19... I came in 2007. So in 2007, they were still using a whiteboard, mm -hmm. not computerized, oh, no. not digital. No. <laughs> I mean, they were still using a whiteboard and dry erase marker. Yes. How long did it take to update this to a computerized system? Well, we were still over our old yards, so it would have been around two, 2012, 11. Wow. Is where we started. Wow. Yeah, we started the whole concept. So it takes a while because you always want to start things slow, right. find out if it works. And of course, it takes a while for your IT people to build the program that you mm. want. They had to custom build yes. the system? Yes. Wow. What was the process of that like? Because I'm guessing you had to discover a lot of bugs and things like that, or things just didn't flow right. What was the process of that like? Well, we had to bring in an outside outside contractor to uh -huh. come in 
uh, which was Markham Group. Okay. Uh, they came in and they interviewed, basically interviewed and watched us go through our process, what it is, what we do, you know, so we had to have uh, where they, we could do drop downs of all the truck numbers we have, all the trailers we have, all the people we have, all the jobs we have, so all the customers, all that has to get loaded in to basically the database. Mm. So from there, we would be able to pull down windows of what's happening and, and all that kind of stuff on the different days of the week. Right. So that's how it got started. And of course, yeah, there were bugs along the way, but Markham sure. Group did get a great job. This is incredibly important because for visioneers who don't know what MTS Solutions does, Describe very briefly what it does, what does MTS Solutions do in the oil field? We mix cocktails for each well. So a little bit of bourbon, a little bit yeah, of vermouth. There you go. <laughs> Drink a little on the side. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so every well is different. Every well has different needs. Every well has different problems. Right. So engineers from the oil field company talk to our engineers here, mm -hmm. our salespeople here, what's happening, what's going on, what do you need. From there, we build the cocktail, mm -hmm. the products that would all get mixed together, put it in a truck, the driver drives it out to the well, and the driver uh, pump operator pumps it down the hole. So this solution goes down the, the, the well Correct. and cleans out the tube that the oil gets pumped out through. Correct. This, this is very important because this makes the pumping the oil much more efficient and it prevents a lot of oil loss and seepage, does it not? Basically what we do, we enhance the production. Mm -hmm. So any of the issues they're having, we put in the, the right chemical that would take care of that issue, whether they have a lot of iron, whether they have a lot of bacteria, mm. whether they have whatever is, in, is causing an issue downhole, we would bring that cocktail out, um, the chemical mixture, to pump it downhole to help it get further out into the, the stream that they would be able to pump down through the, the piping. And this is why using a dry erase board huh. <laughs> is so important because you have to be able to get the right cocktail, the right solution to the right well, the right time at the right place. And trying to erase all that. What, how, how many wells did, do you guys do at a, at, on, a, an, on a given day? Um, Right now, we do between six and seven jobs um, a day. Um, so that would be six or seven wells per day. Um, so every well, every, every job that comes up has a driver and a supervisor. It has a truck and a trailer. Um, maybe two trucks and two trailers, or three trucks and three trailers. So every job is going to bring about all of that that has to get dispatched. <laughs> so when the dry erase for it needed to be changed, the whole thing had to change. <laughs> That's like a full-time job for somebody. Yeah, it, it was crazy. So that, that was the redundancy and the non-efficiency that I saw happening. And that got you promoted? Well, that was just one of the, <laughs> one of the things. Um, I guess what that showed was the fact that I knew how to find solutions and get things done, cause more efficiencies to happen. So people notice you're more than just somebody who works with numbers. Right. You know how to get things done. And so that's what basically started happening with me. I noticed I went outside the box, outside my office, right. and basically started finding things that they had problems with or non-efficiencies, and I helped provide the solutions for those. Senior management saw your talent very quickly. Mm -hmm. One of the things in our previous discussion before recording this on camera, that stuck struck me is that one of the things they started doing is they started offering you stock options mm -hmm. in the business yeah. in the company very early on as as a controller to me that's a sign that they really appreciated what you were doing right because they don't offer that to just everybody no no you don't want to offer a shareholder position to just anybody. Um, they have to be, you know, somebody that's kind of bought in. You know, right. uh, you you believe in what you what you're doing, and you believe in the company, believe in the management, the leadership, and the owners. So, plus there has to be. You don't want to have a shareholder come in that's going to cause problems right. among the other other shareholders. So, yeah, it's it's a big deal. And now you've worked your way up. To being president. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If visioners want to get in touch with you, 
How do they do that? Well, my name is Monda Bird. How do you spell Monda? M O N D A. Okay. And B Y R D. Uh huh. And um, you can get a hold of us on Facebook, LinkedIn, um, our website, mtssolutions.com. Phone number? Six, email? 661 589 5804. Email is Monda at MTS stem.com. And if you like Small Business Celebration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and notify. And when we come back, we're going to go more into what Monda briefly talked about, about taking things slow and incrementally, and how do you deal with change with the old guard when we come right back. Do you want the lowest standard of care for your health? Wellness care is about reversing and preventing illness. Do you want to be managed by sick care or do you want to thrive from your health care? Call Dr. Hugh Beatty, MD, the wellness doc at 661-395-0315 or visit him at hubeatty.com and discover how you can transition from managed sick care to thriving with wellness care. Discover your wellness program that can help you get well, reduce and or eliminate the number of medications you're taking and feel alive again. Call the Wellness Doc at 661-395-0315 or visit him at hubay.com and get better. Call 661-395-0315 or visit him at h-u-g-h-b-e-a-t-t-y.com. I'm here with Monda Bird, the president of MTS Solutions, and our visionary question comes from Ray who asks, I've taken over an existing business and many of the old guard are reluctant to accept the updated system and processes necessary to turn this business around. What have you found that works? It's a good question. <laughs> I think everybody faces old guard um, situations, people. I think in today's society where Everything is getting turned around, turned over. Everybody's feeling like they're going to get replaced. Mm -hmm. And I think for somebody coming in that is new, people are looking at them, what are they going to do? One of the first things when I was vice president that got asked to me, and you know, like the next day I was president, you know, right. I had one of the, the employees come in and say, so now what changes? Mm. And I looked at him and I said, Jeremy, nothing changes. You know, I am who I am. You already know who I am. So right. I'm not going to be changing. Nothing's going to be changing. And he goes, oh, that's great, you know. Um, but I think that's what happens when you have somebody coming in, whether you have somebody coming up through the ranks or somebody coming through the front door for the first time. Who are you? Right. You know, how are you going to treat me? Uh, how are you going to lead? How mm. are you going to, am I going to have to be replaced? You're wanting to change things? What does that mean for me? Right. So I think that um, the first thing is not to do things very quickly, mm. to slow down. Nothing has to be done overnight. You know, the things that you see you have to change, I would say do slowly. Mm. Um, bring the people along with you. Um, they've been there all along. Um, you're the newcomer coming in, so find out who they are, what they do. And if there's something you want to change with them, for them, then get them involved in the process. Right. So they aren't going to be reluctant to be that old guard for you. They will be part of the process for you. Is part of that process, you mentioned, is learning more about the existing employees. Is it also learning why things are the way they are before you just barge in and start changing things? I think it's very important to know that. Mm. Um, if you're calling them old guard, that means that they've been there for a while. Right. Um, they are um, holding down the fort, if you want to call it. Um, they're the ones that maybe created the process that's there now, mm. you know, that has been successful. Uh, what's wrong with it? Why do we have to change it? Um, and so it might be an offense to them, you know. So you have to be very careful, walk carefully. If you want them to follow you, you don't want to, you know, ha cause them to lose respect for you because that's where you want to go. Right. You want them to respect you for what you do, but they need to feel respected as well. And yet, you have a dry erase board <laughs> that is woefully inadequate. How did you go through and explain them explain to them that this the way we've been doing things with this whiteboard has got to change and and we've got to make this investment in computerized system because the old guard is saying but we've always done it this way right 
I didn't so much have the people part that was going to be standing in my way. Mm. So they were ready to do something new. They were the ones doing the redundancy. They were mm. the ones that's not efficient. So they knew that what else can we do? This is all. This is the only way it's been done. You know, it, this is what we do. So it's like you know, give them permission to do something different. Right. Um, so maybe that's a little bit of what happened with me. I didn't have an old guard as far as people that stood in my way. Mm. You know, I basically could make the moves, but I had to. It's their world. Right. They're the one that's working it. So I wanted to make sure that they were good with it too. Once we started doing the magnets, they saw the efficiency of that. You know, that was a little bit. Right. But then, you know, to start talking about how we could even go into, you know, newer century. Right. You know, and do things even more. Um, I, it just got them excited. It sounds like part of it is proven performance. Yes. How have you been able to demonstrate in other areas through proven performance that change is not only not only acceptable, but necessary? Well, I think for most of the time, any kind, kind people are going to be watching you, you have to be consistent with mm. what you're doing. You can't be someone that's like a ping pong ball. You know, they can't follow you if you're right. like a ping pong ball. So I would say, you know, being deliberate. Mm -hmm. um, like for me, I, I talk things through with my managers. You know, it's like we have brainstorm sessions of what we need to do, where we need to go. We get the all buy-in from the managers because if you don't have the support from up top, you can't take it down below. Right. You're going to lose something. So um, a, a lot of it, I'm not an island to myself. I am, a, I am part of the team that works here. So I embrace my managers and we work as a team. One of those things that you do for your managers and your team is a word. Is what? A word. Yes, I have every year, at the beginning of every year, I have our managers choose a word they want to identify with for the year that mm -hmm. they will work toward, work with, it will be part of who they are. Why is that? Well, because I think it gives them a, a place to land for the year. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one person uh, ended up choosing it twice. He didn't feel like he accomplished the first year what oh. he felt like he should have accomplished. Sure. And so he chose it for the second year. So it's things like that. It gives them something to think on. We talk about it mid-year. Where are we? How are you doing? Have you lived up to it? Right. You know, is it part of who you are? Did you choose the right word? Mm -hmm. um, so we have conversations around it. At the end of the year, we do an evaluation of how, how it did. Right. My word was curious. 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 And why is that? Because I'm always curious and I'm asking questions all the time. If you ask any of my employees, what am I known for? I'm known for questions. I, I just, I'm, I'm very curious about things. If I don't know things, like when I started here at MTS, I didn't know anything about the oil fields. Right. And the only way I was going to be able to find out was asking questions and hanging around different people who knew the answers. Right. So, um, and I still don't know everything, so I'm still curious sure. how it all works. But um, I'm interested enough to be curious. In your time here that you started off as a controller, how has MTS changed you? It's made me... Um, more confident, I guess, Okay. because um, I think as you grow through the ranks and people um, start following your ideas and they recognize them, it gives you the confidence to do more. Um, I guess when you don't know you can be a leader and you have nobody putting a ceiling on you, you're just able to keep growing. And that's kind of what happened. Um, nobody put any boundaries around me. Nobody put any ceilings around me. So I just kept going, you know, um, and that's kind of what happened, and, and it just, it just evolved. When we come back, we're going to answer a vision your question, talking about a woman and a man's world. The reason we're talking with Monda Bird of MTS Solutions is because of a visioneer question that came from a visioneer just like you. We had a visioneer that wanted to find out how do I deal with the old guard and change. So if you've got a question, you've got a thought, something you'd like to learn about, reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, and let us know. And who knows, your question could appear here on Small Business Celebration. So if you've got a question, you've got a thought, something you'd like to learn about, reach out to us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram today.
I'm here with Wanda Bird, the president of MTS Solutions, and our visionary question comes from Andrea, who asks, I am a female minority in a male-dominant industry and business. What have you done to gain their respect so they will follow your lead? Welcome to my world. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I have to say. Um, what I honestly believe, I don't believe that respect comes from a gender. Mm. And I do not believe that res respect comes from a title or a position. People are only going to respect you if they see who you are and what you're going to do. Mm. And that you're consistent with that. So that's what I believe. That's when people will respect you and nothing happens overnight. It's a very slow process. One step at a time. One step at a time. What have you done to go through that process one step at a time to gain that respect from, from an industry of people who kind of look at you with curiosity and trepidation at the beginning? Well, again, I think it comes down to consistency. Mm. You know, you don't try to be, you don't have to lord over anybody to try to prove yourself to anybody. You will show them your track record over time. So how you treat them, how you talk to them, how you respect them, um, it, it all becomes who you are. The personhood of respect mm. happens at that point. Uh, John C. Maxwell, he talks about that. The final step in anything with leadership is a fifth step, which is respect. Mm -hmm. And that's a personhood step. Ah. So that's when people will respect you when they know who you are. What is your person? Mm. What are you really mm. like? What book did he put that in? The Five Levels of Leadership. Five Levels of Leadership by John C. Maxwell. Yes, excellent book. How has that book affected your leadership style? Well, I think the book itself is kind of a little bit of what I've done. Mm. When I've started um, on kind of any of my positions, um, way back when I was young and I was working for a credit card company, I, um, we were, I was down in the reconciliation department right. and I could never understand and I fought with the management on it. I said, why do you have us down here doing reconciliation when the process doesn't even doesn't even clear itself for three days. <laughs> but you have us working on this at day one. Right. Which means that all of us are reconciling things that are going to get cleared out. It doesn't make sense. Right. So um, all of that stuff, you know, just the process of what you learn, what you do, who you become, um, it just evolves over time. When you're not in the office, what do you do for fun? I like to walk. Uh -huh. I enjoy walking. I can either listen to music, listen to a podcast or whatever. So it puts me in and transports me into a different place, different uh -huh. world. Um, I can listen to music. Right. Um, I love to ride my bike, you know, so all those different things of activity, which actually is good for energy as well, which creates the blood flow to cause good things to happen. Um, so I like doing that. And probably the biggest thing I love is being with my grandson, Oliver. He's six years old, uh -huh. he lives in L.A., uh -huh. and when I get a chance, I love to spend time with him. What has Oliver taught you that you apply to MTS Solutions? <laughs> it was funny, when he, at Christmas time, he gave me a book. Uh -huh. He was so excited to give me a book. And it was a book about us spending time together, and it was a book of... of Thank you, Grandma, for listening to me. Thank you, Grandma, for having fun with me. Thank you, Grandma, for being here with me. You know, it was, it was a book that just, it was all about being present with him. It wasn't about anything else. So I, you, you realize that it's those kinds of things that are cherished. He showed me that being present, just being with him, was what he valued. And that is what I understood from Oliver. The oil industry is infinitely volatile. Yes. Oil six months ago was eighty, ninety dollars a barrel. Yeah, somewhere in there. And at the time of this recording, oil is one twelve. One twelve. Six months from now, it could be one hundred and fifty, two hundred, or it could be sixty or seventy. <laughs> <laughs> to say that it's a volatile commodities market is an understatement. Mm -hmm. And yet, you have to make decisions based on incomplete information, incomplete data, that not only affect 
your family, it affects your employees and their families, and your customers mm -hmm. and their families. Yes. What makes you wake up every morning and open the business? Well, I think if I had to answer that honestly, it would be that I want to make a difference. Mm. Um, I never make decisions quick. Mm. I'm, I'm, I, I take and I listen, I evaluate. I don't do knee-jerk decisions at all. I always take a step back. Mm -hmm. So in trying to make a difference in, you know, all the stuff that happens in the oil industry, you know, uh, you've got to pace yourself. You have to take what you see, what you hear, and what you know and try to make sense of it. Mm -hmm. And what's that going to do for you, your employees, your customers, everybody that's involved in the decisions that you make. So showing up every day, you know, being present is, um, and making a difference is probably what makes, makes me wake up every morning. If visioneers want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Well, they can contact me directly, Monda Bird at mts-stem.com. Phone number is 661-589-5804. Well, Monda, this has been a privilege. Thank you very much for joining us here on Small Business Celebration. Thank you for inviting me. It's been a pleasure. And I'll be right back with my final thought. This is Small Business Celebration. Welcome, where we chat with real business owners who have real success and learn from them about what works, what doesn't, and who want you to know that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not a train. Join us where you can learn something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business. Succession from a dry erase board. I know, I know, I know. I absolutely could not get over the fact that an oil services company until very recently was still using a dry erase board to keep track of their logistics. They've got clients and customers all over the state of California and they were until very recently not computerized and it was just a mess. But the important part of all this story is one that I hope didn't go unnoticed. Mondo Bird came in simply as a controller. Someone to look over and review and keep track of the books and making sure everything was working like it's supposed to. But it took an outside person to sit there and go, hmm, maybe there's a better way. But more importantly, it was the management at the time that realized her talents. Now, if you've been a follower of Small Business Celebration for some time, you've noticed that we've had numerous guests that have laid out the succession plan of their business based upon people that they've hired that have shown remarkable insight. And that is exactly what happened at MTS Solutions. So as you grow and develop your business and you're thinking about who will succeed and take over your business, who knows? Your successor may be the person who knows how to go from a dry erase board to a computerized system. I hope you enjoyed our conversation this week with Mona Bird, the president of MTS Solutions, and I hope you learned something that you can use today to grow a strong and profitable business, and we'll see you here again next week. What did one hat say to the other hat? I don't know. Wait here, I'll go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Small Business.